So far this season, the Atlanta Hawks are really struggling. Um, we're starting four and six, you know, twelfth seed behind Boston, who's four and six, the Bucks, who are four and five. I'm not gonna say this is gonna last forever, but if we keep doing what we're doing right now, it might. We might. We might fall. We might fall into play in, and that's something that we really don't want to do. Um, the Hawks, you know, last year just made the conference finals. We were two games away. We were missing our, in my opinion, our second best player, who who I thought was our second best player then. Now he's looking like the third best player because honestly, so far, John Collins has surprised me. He's been playing better than he was last year and last year in the playoffs. Um, but enough talking about that. I'm going to, we need to address the problems. Okay. And I'm just gonna make some things clear though. I'm not, I'm not just going to hate on the Atlanta Hawks, you know, we've had how many games? I think we've had like seven of our games be away and we've only played four home games. Actually, that'd be like six away games. But yeah, um, we've had to play more away games than home games. And obviously, home is where we have the advantage. We're actually three and one at home. And we are one and five. We are one and five away. Um, so I'm going to say that record is unexcusable. We've played teams like the Cavs away, the Pelicans away. Uh, we've played, I mean, we, we, we've just played so many bad teams away. I, I mean, you know, we lost to the Nets and the Suns, whatever. The Suns was a very winnable game. This is actually the day after. I don't know when I'm posting this, but this is the day after the Suns game. We had a 12-point lead with like four minutes left. And we blew it. And there's just, I think there's so many reasons for that. Um, The first main problem with the Atlanta Hawks right now has to be Nate McMillan. And I know no one's ever going to want... I, I, Okay, so fans of other teams are going to be like, hey, you guys are never happy with your coach. Um, you guys just made the Eastern Conference Finals. Don't be mad at your coach. Everything's going to work out, blah, 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 blah. I don't think so. Um, after seeing the rotations, after seeing, you know, the interviews after the games to Nate McMillan, his biggest problem right now is his love, apparent love for Lou Williams. Um, Lou Williams had a really good run last year in the playoffs. Some of the games, he had a really good run. But the guy plays no defense and only half the games he's on, on on for offense. With Trey Young, I can excuse him being a terrible defender. Like a terrible one. Where like every other player is not only doing their part in defense, but making up for Trey Young. For Lou Williams, I can't defend it. When we have a point guard who I said was like the free agent signing of the year, or like the most underrated one, not the biggest, but the most underrated one, being DeLon Wright, a guy who's 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 can defend for himself, a good playmaker, can shoot the three really well, can finish really well, you know... I just, I don't understand how we, he's off the bench and then Nate McMillan says his time will come. While Lou Williams is just struggling, but we're just playing him because he was part of what Nate McMillan reminds me right now of one of those high school coaches who just keeps, you know, keeps with the same players throughout the entire four years of the basketball team. Like, like he doesn't let go of a player for anything, no matter how bad he is, no matter how good the other people are, at the tryouts, he's just going to keep playing them. Lou Williams should have retired last year. Not to say that he's terrible, but I mean, why did we resign him? We have a backup point guard. An actual point guard. Lou Williams is not a point guard, but right now we're playing him as a point guard. It doesn't make any sense. It that pisses me off. Trey Young right now is not looking like himself and even said in a in an interview, like, the regular season is boring. How can the regular season be boring? You're losing. You're bored of losing. Probably because you're losing by 20 and you're getting blown out. I mean, I assume that is probably pretty pretty boring, losing by 20. That doesn't make any sense. You know, he's he's passing up wide open layups for his teammates because I guess, oh, it's fun. Dude, we need to win games. We've had pretty easy opponents. We played the Suns without DeAndre Eaton. We played the, the Jazz without Donovan Mitchell. We played the Nets without Kyrie Irving. We've had some very easy games. And we're just blowing it. We're just losing for no reason at all. Except, oh, I guess I'm bored. I'm just going to lose the game. It doesn't make any sense. And I understand, like, let's say, you know, like the Lakers are struggling right now. The Celtics are struggling right now. The Bucks are, are struggling right now. The Bucks are injured. The Celtics have new players. The Lakers have new players. They have to get their chemistry back and adapt. We have the exact same, we have almost the exact same roster. If you want to play Lou Williams over DeLon Wright, then we have the exact same roster. Why is there any chemistry issues? So if there's going to be chemistry issues, why not it be with the better backup point guard, low on right? Or why don't we just trade him? You know how many teams could... Are we just hoarding him so other teams can't get him? Because we know how good he is. We know that we could get some assets back if we traded him away. If we're just not going to play him. And then when, when he was asked, like, what can DeLon Wright do to get minutes? Nate McMillan said, be patient. 
look up his stats from past years. He is a really good point guard. And even when his shot wasn't falling in the first couple games that McMillan did play him, he was still holding his own on defense. We, we, we had a positive record when he was winning, or when he was playing. He wasn't shooting it that bad, but he was also playmaking. He wasn't turning the ball over. Like, what, what do you want from him? It's so weird. It's so weird. John Collins is really surprising me. He's playing way better than expected. Um, I honestly was not too high of signing him for 125 million, but so far he's playing like the the first or second best player on this on this team. So you know what? So far he's deserving of that money. DeAndre Hunter. He's he's been playing good, De- especially defensively. He's been good. Um, offensively, he has some games where he shoots 10 for 11, and one last night he shot one for nine. It, it's it's just gonna happen. You know, I'm not gonna be too mad at him, but he needs to be more consistent. Bogdan Bogdanovich, dude, this this is annoying, okay? I was liking what I saw from him yesterday, except when he just kept chucking threes, and then with 20 seconds left, he takes a fade, one second into the shot clock, when you have 15 seconds left, one second into the shot clock, he takes a fading, limitless, deep three-pointer and airballs it when we're down three. We just don't need that shot. It, it, it's annoying. It, it, it's to the point where I want to bench him, but who do I bench it for? Herder, who's just been so, like, he was so bad the first, like, five or six games. He's catching up a little bit. So maybe we should start him. Like, can we discipline our players instead of babying them? The thing is, I did not like Lloyd Pierce because he he would do the opposite of baby them. He would, like, force them into players they're not. But then we have Nate McMillan, who just doesn't care what the players do. As long as, oh, they're having fun or something. And it, I want some middle ground, okay? And it's not, it's not like Nate McMillan, I, I'm allowed to be mad at him, because it's not like he's had a good track record. Last year was his first ever good year in the playoffs. And it's, like, as a coach. And his entire career. So because of that one year, what, we're supposed to just be happy for him and keep him? I'm not saying we fire him, but we, we need to dis- discipline our players. Capello has been terrible. It's not even something that I can just say. Like, he's, he's just been missing easy layups. He's just been allowing easy layups at the rim. He's just been terrible. Um, Cam Reddish, just, I, I love Cam Reddish, right? I have his jersey, I have all that, he's a good, you know, he's a decent defender. Sometimes he just leaves his defender open for no reason, and other times, he's just so reckless with the ball. He's like, he kind of reminds me of like Jordan Clarkson, and Jordan Clarkson is a very scary player to have on your team, because he will, he will take very contested shots, just like J.R. Smith. When they go in, it's amazing, and when they don't, it's terrible. If Cam Reddish can just attack the rim more, that, that's just all I want from him. And to just shoot open threes instead of these moving sidestep three-pointers for no reason. Um, Gallinari, cool. I really I really miss a Kongu. It really sucks that you had to be hurt. I mean, Jang is doing kind of his job, but like, a Kongu is really like that defensive anchor who I thought could really step up and take Capella's place this year. And it sucks that he's hurt. Hopefully, you know, when he recovers, he's just as athletic. It seems like, you know, with DeAndre Hunter, after all of his injuries, he's nowhere near as explosive and as aggressive, except like for against the Nets when he had an amazing game. Um, But yeah, no, this team's a mess. And, you know, so far, our next three games we have to play, we have to play the Warriors in, what's the arena called? Whatever, in Golden State. We have to play Utah in Utah. We have to play Denver in Denver. We have a very tough schedule. If we could just win, if we could win two out of the next three, that could change everything around. We would be a 500 team after playing like 10 games of away games. And it would be eight, eight away games, no, nine away games, and then like four home games. If we were 500 after nine away games and four home games, that would be amazing. Because no matter how good of opponents you play, home court advantage is a thing and it's real and it's it's scary. But um, I mean, that's kind of like all I have to say. I really hope for the best, better for the Hawks. I hope Trey gets more aggressive and realizes that he can really be... I, I just... It also pisses me off with Trey Young, just the whole foul baiting thing, okay? And him trying to get these sneaky fouls, he doesn't need to do that. We saw yesterday, I don't know if you guys, like, were watching, or I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying that as if I'm, like, talking to someone, I'm talking to anyone watching this video, but, like, with, like, five or six minutes left, or it might have been, no, it was the end of the third quarter, he was doing whatever he wanted on that court. Then again, his three ball was falling. We do need that to happen for Trey. Trey right now is shooting, like, less than 30% from three. That needs to change. He needs to go back to that 2018-19 version of himself. Or no, the 2019-20 version of himself where himself where uh, he was shooting really well. Just add that with the last year's self. Like, if he could be a really good shooter, that would be great. Because so far, he's not showing that. But, man, this team right now, it's a mess. 
chemistry wise, just how we're playing. Our defense is awful because we're always. I just I really hope Trae Young can also become a better defender because we have good we have decent defenders, but when Bogdan Bogdanovich, who's already isn't that he's not an elite defender, has to make up for Trey, and we have to keep playing help defense and just relying on the opponent to just miss open threes. That's not how you should play basketball. Just leaving people open for three. But um What do you guys think about the Hawks? Uh, let me know in the comments. Are you worried? I'm I'm kind of worried. I'm not too worried. I think we can still I think no matter what we'll be at least seven or eight seed before the play-in tournament but like i would really prefer if we were a upper echelon team <laughs> in the in the east for sure I, I wish we could get home court advantage for as many rounds as we can because home court advantage is a huge thing for the playoffs we need that we barely beat philly i understand you know reddish and deandre hunter were hurt but we barely beat philly and philly was a mess of a team they should have beat us too many to we, we should not have to rely on 20 point comebacks that should not be a thing next year's playoffs. We should be up 20 and then just keeping it. We shouldn't have to be down 20 and having to come back. But um, let me know your guys' thoughts. Um, Like the video, subscribe. Hopefully I'll be posting more, but I always promise that. And I never ended up doing it just because I have to, you know, work full time and I have to do a bunch of stuff. But hopefully I, hopefully I upload tomorrow. And uh, yeah, peace.